Hey guys, welcome back to my channel. With this video, I'm going to be discussing books that were absolute five star reads, my favorite reads of 2018. I know I'm a little bit late on doing this. Um, I kind of finished the book on New Year's Eve, so I kind of had to gather my list together. Um, I am referring to my novel companion, which was my book planner in 2018. There's a section in there for five star reads and I kind of added um, throughout the year every time I had a five star read. Now, I only had 11 five-star reads, not counting my reread of Harry Potter, because all of my Harry Potter books were five-star reads. So, 11 books, um, in addition to Harry Potter, that were five-star reads for me. So, let's get started. I just want to remind you guys to like this video and subscribe to my channel so you guys can see future bookish videos from me. All right, so the first read that I'm going to, or the first five-star book that I'm going to start with is actually part of a series. If you guys have followed my channel or watched any of my other bookish videos, you'll probably know, or this will be no surprise to you, that one of my favorite books of the year was A Court of Mist and Fury. So this is book number two in the A Court of Thorns and Roses series. I'm a huge fan of this series. I read it so quickly. They are pretty big books and I read them faster than I normally read books. I liked all the other books as well. Um, the first one, first book was probably my second favorite and then the third, it's my third favorite and then the fourth one was a novella so it was kind of hard to judge that one. It was a little short and a little just uneventful, but it was still a good book. It's a good bridge to the second half of the series. Um, but yeah, book number two, A Court of Mist and Fury, was definitely my favorite. I felt like it was like involved and exciting through the entire thing. Um, this will be a series that I will go back and reread. I don't know if I'll listen to them on Audible this time or if I'll read the physical copies. I have so many books I want to read, so it's really hard to go back and reread stuff. Um, my last reread of Harry Potter was on Audible because that was something like easy to listen to and fantastic. Um, so anyways, yeah, if you guys have not read the series or if it's been on your TBR, you need to make it a priority. This series is so good. You'll read it so quick. Um, and yeah, book number two was a fave for sure. Okay, the next five star read for me, I actually don't have the physical copy anymore. I lent it to a friend, but it was The Boy in the Striped Pajamas. If you guys have never read this, oh, you need to, especially if you're a fan of historical fiction. It was so good. It was very sad, very heartbreaking, as most historical fictions are. Um, it's a very easy, short read. I guess it would help if I mentioned the author. It's John Boyne, which I read The Heart's Invisible Furies by him. That was my first book by him, and I really liked it. So this is the second book I read by him. I was actually surprised when I got it to see how um, small the book was, like how short it was. But it's all told from the perspective of a nine-year-old boy, I believe. And it's so good. It's so good. If you guys can tell from the title, it's set in World War II. Most of the book setting takes place in or near Auschwitz. Very good. Very, very good book. So I highly suggest it. The next two books actually that were five star reads for me are part of a series. So for the last two years, I've been reading the James Patterson Women's Murder Club series. And I started off last year reading the 14th and the 15th book. So the 14th is the 14th Deadly Sin and the 15th book is called The 15th Affair. I have gone between four and five stars on all of the books of the series. Some of them are just like really, really good and then the next book is like not as quite exciting. So I kind of compare one book to the one I just read. So that's why some of them have a four star versus five. They're all very good, but I loved The 14th Deadly Sin and The 15th Affair. They were both very good books in the series. It's been a while since I've read them now. Um, like it's been almost a year, so I can't remember the exact details because since then I've read the 16th and the 17th, which were also good, but they were not five star reads for me. They were another four star. Um, so I can't remember what specifically about the 14th and the 15th book that I really liked, but I did. I think it was the cases. Um, with those like detective type, crime type mystery series, I kind of judge them by like the, um, the case and how like unique it is and how the detectives come up with like their theories and just kind of like the involvement of the whole story. So those books were five star reads for me. The next five star read might come as quite a shock because I, it's part of a series, it's by one of my favorite authors, but I did not like, I don't like any of the other books in the series as much that I've read so far. Does that make sense? Okay, so it is the Throne of Glass series by Sarah J Mass. I read Throne of Glass and I was kind of underwhelmed. I thought the ending was really good, so that's what bumped it up to four stars for me, but the whole book, I was like sitting at three stars. And then I read, 
I can't even think of the name of the second one. Is it Crown of Midnight? Oh my gosh, you throw in a glass, people are gonna be like screaming at me right now. So I, I listened to the second one on Audible. It was okay, same thing. It was like, it had okay parts, but I think I still rated it three and a half or four stars. I think I read the novella next. So that brings me to my five star read, which is The Assassin's Blade. This is like her point five of the series. This is a series of five, well, it doesn't say, but I think it's five novellas in here. Um, so basically, if you guys have read the series or if you know a little bit about it, Selena is the main character in the books. And Throne of Glass starts out with where Selena is like presently. So The Assassin's Blade is kind of like a prequel to that. So it goes back and talks about her past and how she got to where she is. So this book ends where Throne of Glass begins, if that makes sense. Um, I was told by people that have read the series to read book one, book two, then read this, and then three and so on. So that's what I did. I have read through book three. I have not started book four yet, which I hear is a really good book of the series, but I just don't love the series, so I'm not motivated to read it. However, that brings us to the ironic situation of me loving this book and giving this book five stars. I don't know what it was, but this book was so much better than anything else in the series. You could kind of read it as a standalone because they don't really give any hints to the future until the end. Um, it was good. I really liked it. Um, I liked hearing about Selena. She's a badass, which I kind of knew from the first one, but in Throne of Glass, she's kind of like whiny. She's kind of a brat in my opinion. Um, and she was just, it's like, she was just a badass in these books. I don't know. I really liked her in The Assassin's Blade. I flew through this book. After I read this, I had so much hope for Air of Fire because I'm like, okay, now we're getting somewhere. Now that's what I want to read. But Air of Fire was the same way. Everyone's like, oh yeah, that one's a lot better than the first two. It was maybe a little bit better, but I think the first three books are just all very similar. It's like they're just kind of boring and then there's a couple of exciting parts, maybe enough for me to give it four stars, but it's just like the overall book, it's just, I don't know, I just don't love it like I loved A Court of Thorns and Roses like I thought I would, and maybe that's the problem. Maybe I'm comparing it too much with that series. This book, I believe, was written later. Like I think she put this out like after the rest of the series, or not the rest of the series, because Kingdom, Kingdom of Ash just came out. But I think she put this out a lot later, and I don't know if maybe she was writing A Court, a court of Thorns and Roses around the time she was writing this. I don't know. I need to look at dates, because I have no idea when these came out. I'm a little late to the game. But I just feel like this one has a vibe that I enjoy much more than the rest of the Throne of Glass series. So if you haven't checked out the series yet, I don't know if you guys want to start with one or start with this. I've heard mixed reviews. I don't think it matters at this point. I don't know. I like the way I read it, but I feel like some people that are like me, maybe they'll read Throne of Glass and not enjoy it as much. So they won't continue on. So maybe if you start with this one, you'd like this one better. I don't know. That's that's my opinion. But anyways, um, yeah, five star read for sure. Eventually I'll finish the series. Hopefully the other books I like better than I did the first three. And the next book on my list, surprise, surprise, has a cat on it. I totally, totally loved Dewey. Let me get this right. The Small Town Library Cat Who Touched the World. I solely bought this book like on thrift books or something for the cover. And then it just so happens that in my Pop Sugar Reading Challenge last year, I had a prompt that had an animal on the cover, I think. And then it also fit for my Newt's readathon that I did in August. I think it was like a, a beast or an animal on the cover. So I kind of use this for both prompts. Um, he's just so cute. Look at Dewey. Look how sweet he is, his little face. He reminds me of my kitty Rio. Just like, he just like looks into your soul. <laughs> so normally I'm super picky with nonfictions. Um, most of my nonfictions get three stars because I don't know, it has to be really, really good for me to like it. I feel like a lot of them are preachy, which I guess they're kind of meant to be, but I feel like they're just kind of like repetitive and just going over the same thing over and over again. So for nonfiction to really captivate me, it's just, it's gotta be, it's gotta be just right. I don't know how to explain it, but this book, obviously I knew I was gonna like it because it involved a cat. I didn't realize you could write a book this long about a cat's life but Dewey was such an extraordinary cat. This is totally true. It is by Vicki Myron. She's the one who rescued him and kind of raised him in the library. Um, she was a librarian. Just from the beginning, from how they found him, he was dropped in a book drop and she rescued him. He was like near death, freezing cold, just cuddled up under some books in the book drop. Just so, I mean, such a cruel person that would be able to do that to a cat, but 
it was fate that he ended up there I guess because Vicky took him in and he totally took on the role of the library's cat. He would greet people. She talks about even people who don't like cats loved him and he warmed up to everybody and he just kind of made it his mission to make everybody like him. Um, if there were kids that were shy or kids that needed something, he could sense that and he would sit in their lap during story time. He gave his time equally to everybody. Just the way Vicky talks about this cat is just so amazing. I just think there's such a special bond between somebody and their pet, any kind of animal, whatever it is. And you could tell they had such a special bond. So obviously like any books about animals, like Marley and me, for example, or anything, it's, it's going to be sad. You know, animals have a short lifespan. This book was written in 2008 so it's over 10 years old i knew it wasn't going to have a happy ending but the story overall is a happy one it's really good i cried twice during this book it's just it was so good my only regret is that i wish i would have had a chance to go up to the spencer public library and meet mr dewey so definitely check this out especially if you're a cat lover you're gonna love it if you guys like um i mean really anything it does focus a lot around the library so if you obviously like reading you probably wouldn't be here if you didn't like reading but it, it's a good story about like Vicky and her life as well it's not all about Dewey but he is the main focus of the whole story so very very good five star read for me okay and my next five star read I actually don't have the physical copy of this book either this one I um, checked out from the library and this book has been on my list for a long time and I believe it was the pop sugar reading challenge prompt of a childhood classic that you've never read or maybe just a childhood classic and this surprised me because a lot of people um, read this in school I know it turned into a banned book which I actually might have used it during a readathon for a banned book prompt as well but my husband my husband doesn't read and my husband was actually talking about how he had to read this book in school and he really liked it so I couldn't believe that I had a read it yet it's been on my list for a while so I went ahead and read it but it was The Giver by Lois Lowry and it was so good it was such a short easy read I can see why it was banned but not that I agree with that I think it's a I think it's an important book to read I think it kind of makes you grateful for what you have it's kind of this dystopian novel where feelings emotions color any like Anything that makes you you, any little extras, details that makes you have your personality, it's all taken away. Everything's black and white. There is, everybody has their role. It's a very organized, strict community. There's no crime. There's no jealousy. There, Because nobody has something that somebody else doesn't have. It's all fair. It's all equal. It's very interesting. It's a very interesting take. It. I can't imagine the mind that it takes to come up with this fantastic dystopian concept it's really good there is it is a series i guess i found that out while i was reading it i have not read any more of the series but i definitely need to um i did watch the movie after i read the book and the movie adaptation was actually really good i really enjoyed it my husband and i actually watched it together it was very different obviously um i did like the book better that's usually the case except for maybe one or two books but um, yeah, the book was a five star read for me. Very, very good. And it's like I said, it's easy to read. I think it's a great read for like a high school level or up to adult because I liked it as well. Uh, so yeah, very easy, short, good read. Okay, and my next five star read actually kind of surprised me. Again, I told you with nonfictions, um, I'm kind of picky. And I got this nonfiction. I ordered it as a pre-sale because the celebrity that wrote it i really really like her she is one of my idols i look up to her i think she's so beautiful inside and out and um i follow her on instagram her instagram is fantastic if you guys have never watched but anyways it is staying stylish by candace cameron beret i she had this on amazon like for 11 dollars or something for a special like pre-order so i ordered it then it had been on my shelf for a little while and i decided to finally read it last year it's a lot of pictures so it really doesn't take long i think it took me one night to get through it and i did stop and obviously i tabbed a lot of stuff and i looked up a lot of stuff she gives amazing fashion advice makeup skincare fitness just being a decent human being she gets gives all kinds of advice um and she's so cute like i just enjoyed seeing like all the pictures in the book but i flagged things like she goes through like how to 
piece together like like fashion and outfits like with with being on a budget i flagged like this page is like her favorite basic t-shirts and she has like target and gap and h&m and macy's so it's not all like high-end stuff and i appreciate that so much and oh yeah and like talking about shoes i don't know this isn't for everybody i didn't think this would be something that i would love um i thought it would just be like an okay book and it's just a pretty book for my shelf but i actually really really liked it I marked a bunch of her skincare because she goes over like her favorite products. She has amazing skin, so um, she's somebody that I look up to for that. There's a lot of makeup tips. She talks about her favorite brands. So I marked all of that. I need to go back and put pretty page markers in here. Um, easy ways to style your hair and products to use. What else did I mark? Oh, and then like um, eating healthy. Um, there's just some tips on like what to eat. There's a lot of fitness stuff, like fitness basics, and it's cute. Like, are her pictures hilarious? So yeah, there's a lot of good stuff in here. I feel like it's a good reference book for any woman. So yeah, I really, really liked it. It has this pretty little ribbon bookmark in it. And like I said, I need to go back and redo my tabs. This is These were the sticky notes I had on hand when I read it, but... Um, yeah, very pretty book, nice hardback book, and I love supporting her just because I, I think she's a great person. She's a great actress. I grew up watching her on Full House, and now I'm watching Fuller House. I almost said Fuller House in the first one. So yeah, I just, I really like her. I really respect her, and I think this was a great, great read. Now, I did read her other book, Kind is the New Classy. I listened to it, which it was great because she narrated it. That one was not quite as much for me as this one. That one I think I gave three or four stars, I can't remember. Like I said, I'm really picky with nonfictions. Um, it was good, it had a lot of good tips, and it was just like, it was an overall positive book about being kind um, and treating others how you would want to be treated, but there it was a little bit too much on the religious side for me, which I totally, totally respect because I know she's a strong Christian, um, and, I, and I totally respect her for, for staying true to who she is and writing books that she wants to write and how she wants to write it. So I totally respect that. Just for me personally, it was just not, it just didn't reach me as much as this book. Anyways, good, easy, five-star read. Okay, and I only have three books left on my um, top 2018 reads and I don't have the physical copies of them. So the next one is, oh, and these are kind of out of order because I just realized one of them should have been like up before some of the other books. But anyways, the next one that I read was Emma in the Night. I actually got this with my book of the month subscription and I have, have since lent it to my friend. I think I just read it in November or December. I can't remember which one, but it was so good. It was very suspenseful. It was a thriller. It had a lot of family drama, a lot of crazy family relationships. Basically, without giving away anything, two girls go missing and I think it's months later. No, not even months, years. It's a long time later, one of the daughters ends up coming back and they can't figure out, it's not that she's like not talking about it, but she's not saying the right things. They can't figure out where her sister went, which is Emma, um, or what happened. And they're slowly piecing together, piecing together the puzzle. The, I believe psychologist is what she was, um, that is on the case. It actually is the one that makes the breakthrough and kind of figures it out. And she, she does so by studying, I cannot remember, I'm so bad with names. Let me see if I have it in my reviews. So the other sister, the one that I can't remember her name, it's so bad. Um, it'll come to me as soon as we're done here. I think it's like Cass. I think Cass is it, because I think it was short for Cassandra. If I'm wrong, I'll put it on the screen. I feel bad if I'm wrong, but I'm just really bad at remembering character names. But anyways, the psychologist kind of studies Cass and then her mom um, and kind of sees their relationship and kind of pieces together what happens. She interviews Cass a little bit more, gets more information, and finally figures out what is going on. And I guess the, um, the doctor herself had like a rough kind of relationship with her mother and upbringing. It's kind of because of how she is and how her mother was that she kind of comes to these conclusions that this family has the same type of dynamics and she finds out what happens. Very good. Um, the end, I, I knew there was going to be a twist. I didn't pinpoint it exactly, but I knew something wasn't quite right. And um, it ended up being really good. It was it was a little shocking to me. So very, very good five-star read. And the next five-star read, which this book I actually had four and a half stars on and then I went back and changed 
because I gave it four and a half stars, I believe because of the ending. I need to reread this book, but I went back and changed because I cannot stop thinking about it. I love this book. I refer it to everybody that I know. It is Fangirl by Rainbow Rowell. It is my first Rainbow Rowell book I've ever read. I've heard so many good things about it. I thought it would just be a cutesy little contemporary read and I never thought that I would love it as much. But if you guys watch my channel again, you've heard me talk about this book before in one of my reading wrap up videos. Um, but the main character, Kath, oh my gosh. So Kath is a twin, but I swear she could have been my twin because I have never connected so much with a character than I did with Kath. So I just felt like everything she said, everything she thought is the same way I would react in those situations. She had very similar thoughts to me. She does write fan fiction. I don't write fan fiction, so it's not like that, but it's just like kind of like the anxiety about things and her demeanor and the way she reacts to certain situ situations reminds me so much of myself and her whole experience going to college and not really wanting to like do the social part of college. I totally get it. I didn't want to do that at all. I was like, I just want to be here and I want to study and I want to go home. Um, I did make some friends. I did do some sh social things, but it's because I really pushed myself out of my element and I was uncomfortable the entire time. But yes, fangirl, I highly recommend it five-star read, one of my favorite books. I am gonna go back and reread it, hopefully very soon, because I just love it so much. Okay, and my last five-star read of the year, I just finished this one. This is, was the one that I finished on New Year's Eve, and it's called. it was A Man Called Uva. It was so good. I've had it recommended to me by a couple other people. I do like Frederick Backman's writing. Um, I, I didn't love every book of his that I've read so far, but I really liked My Grandmother Asked Me to Tell You She's Sorry. This book had the same kind of feel to me. What I love most about this book was it did have an element of humor in it, um, there were a lot of funny parts, although overall it was a really heartwarming but heartbreaking story. I teared up throughout this book. Um, it was a little slow at first and it was a little slow at times. It did flashback a lot. It's mainly Uva as an old man and kind of what he's going through, but it flashes back to when he met his wife, when he was a child, that kind of thing. Um, just so you could see his overall story and why he is the way he is. He has experienced so much loss and tragedy in his life and he's kind of a crotchety old man, but I love him. I think it's because he reminds me of the men in my life. He kind of reminds me a little bit of my grandpa and he reminds me a little bit of my dad because my dad's gonna be like my grandpa i'm sure and then my husband's kind of like that too so it kind of reminds me of those guys like they he deeply deeply cares about his wife but he comes off as such an arse if you want to say that um and he he means well and he just is very particular he wants everything to be in order and have structure and he just doesn't appreciate people that don't pay attention in life and take responsibility and stuff like that but he actually has a, a soft spot and he comes around with a lot of people and he ends up helping a lot of people and um having a lot of friends but it's very very heartbreaking so I don't know, there's not many authors that can take a sad story or a sad situation and put a little bit of humor into it and make it that enjoyable. But I think Frederick Backman really did that. So yeah, that was definitely a five star read for me. And I did listen to it on audiobook and I highly recommend that. Um, the audiobook was amazing. So if you guys have a chance, listen to that. And also I wanna follow up, the movie adaptation was very, very good. The actors were amazing. It was slightly different. There was a couple like different elements in there, but it was very, very good. Um, I actually bawled at the end of the movie. Like I freaking cried during the movie. All right, now I wanna do some honorable mentions. So I'm not gonna do four stars because I have like a majority of my books were four star reads, but I think I have a couple of four and a half star reads. Okay, so earlier I talked about the Women's Murder Club series and I talked about the 14th and 15th book. Um, I gave four and a half stars to the 17th book, which is the 17th suspect and I will just read my review because I don't remember, like I said, I don't remember the specifics, but I'll read my review so you guys can see kind of what my thought process was. Um, I said I enjoyed this book more than the last couple of the series. As per usual, we had a dual case. I really enjoyed the case Yuki was working. It was so strange, but I love the courtroom scenes. So that is true. Some of his books have a heavier like courtroom scene, more intense, and sometimes it's kind of boring, but this one was really, really good. So I really enjoyed The 17th Suspect. So that was almost a five-star read. 
Okay, and then my next four and a half star read was The Perfect Couple by Ellen Hildebrand. And um, I wrote that this book surprised me. It was my first Ellen Hildebrand book, and I always assumed her stories were cute chicklets. I was wrong. This book did take place in Nantucket, as she's known for, but the death of a maid of honor right before a wedding makes for a good mystery. It surprised me. I really thought, and it's got like a cute like couple on a beach, and I just thought it was gonna be like a cute beachy read, like, you know, this couple has a has a minimal problem and little fight and then they make up. You know, I just thought it was gonna be like a cutesy little read. It was not. It was a murder mystery and it was so good. And then my next honorable mention, and I think this is the last four and a half star read of the year. Yes, um, it is All We Ever Wanted by Emily Giffen. And it's not the first Emily Giffen book I read. I read one, I think it was called When I Was Yours or something like that. Oh, I'll have to look it up, I can't remember. But but All We Ever Wanted was totally different than what I thought as well. And I'm gonna read you what I wrote. Um, I wrote, I love this book. It was more serious than any other Giffen books I've read, but I couldn't put it down. There was conflict and dynamic relationships and it hit close to home. I knocked off half a star for the ending. It wrapped up a little quicker and nicer than I wanted it to. Uh, but yes, very, very good read. So definitely check that one out as well. All right, guys, that is it for my best of 2018 books. I hope you guys enjoyed this. Let me know down in the comments if you guys have read any of these, if you agree with me, or if there's books that you didn't like. I'd like to know just your take on it. It's really interesting. That's what I love about the book community is we all have opinions and it's very interesting to see what people think and kind of how somebody can love a book that somebody else hates. So very interesting to me and I would love to chat with you guys down in the comments. So make sure you subscribe so you can keep in touch with all of my other videos and I'll talk to you guys later. Bye.